categorically, I don't think we'll see another crypto bull run. So I'm not saying it goes away, but I think the days of 2017 and 2020, 2021, where the entire market cap went up and you could close your eyes and throw a dart, I think those days are over. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Talk Crypto. In this video, we have Mark Moss, host of Market Disruptors and co-author of The Uncommunist Manifesto, talking about Bitcoin and crypto, the FTX collapse and what to expect in 2023. Moss is a sound money advocate and also considered a Bitcoin maximalist, yet he has recently stated that we will not see another crypto bull run, which came as a surprise to many people. I received quite a bit of backlash from the crypto community, he said. So, does that mean we will not see all-time highs again for Bitcoin? Let's listen to Mark Moss as he gives his take on the effects of the FTX collapse in crypto and his predictions for Bitcoin's future. But before we do, please consider subscribing to our channel, as we bring you daily content on the latest crypto news. And now, let's jump right into the video. So about every 50 years, for the last 300 years, about every 50, there's a technological revolution. So we have lots of new technologies, but about every 50 years is a technological revolution. There's been five. So we had the industrial revolution. We had steam engines and railways. We had electricity and steel. We had oil and automobiles. We had microprocessors, which brought us telecommunications, internet, etc. And now we're witnessing another technological revolution, and that is Bitcoin. And the revolution is decentralization. Now, what's interesting about technological revolutions is they change the course of humanity, but they also drive financial markets. What's driven the markets for the last 50 years? Telecom, internet, what drove before that? Ford, GMG, what before that? Oil, steel, right? And so it, that's what we're witnessing. Now, uh, Jack Mahler's um, said that uh, crypto is an arbitrage on the trend, an arbitrage on the trend. So we have a real technological revolution happening and that is decentralization all of the cryptocurrency assets because they can't be more decentralized than bitcoin they try to innovate on something else the problem is the innovation isn't something else the innovation is the decentralization and so all of these investors they think oh we're just trying to make more us dollars and so this one could go up more or faster than bitcoin so i'll buy that instead and of course all assets move all prices move on supply and demand so bitcoin has a supply cap of 21 million if more people buy it more demand that pushes the price up but the 1000 5000 10000 now 22000 crypto assets pull the demand away from Bitcoin because most people are not educated enough to understand what's going on. And they go, oh, this is the next Bitcoin. I can make money on it. I can make more US dollars. Whereas Bitcoiners, and I know you have many of them on as well, you know, the Max Geysers of the world, like we're on a different mission. Like this is a, this is a decentralized revolution that will literally change the world. Uh, we've solved the oldest problem in humanity, which is how do I custody my assets in a way that can't be manipulated, stolen, and if I wanna transfer it, it's censorship resistant. And so we've solved that problem and um, it's a big deal. It's a big deal that's going to create a lot of value, more value than we could ever imagine. And most people just don't understand that piece. So, um, you know, what uh, somebody like myself, maybe as you, as you said, a Bitcoin maximalist, but a, a Bitcoin person, uh, we were, were very clear to say Bitcoin, not crypto. Not okay. saying that Bitcoin isn't a cryptographically secured uh, currency. It's not a cryptocurrency. It's just that when we talk about Bitcoin, we're talking about Bitcoin. And when we talk about crypto, we talk about crypto, but we don't interchange those two. Okay. Um, one of my favorite analysts, Lynn Alden, said to confuse Bitcoin and crypto means you understand neither. And so it's kind of like that. And so when I say that crypto as a category, I, I'm making the claim that it won't see another bull run as a category, but I believe it's massively bullish for Bitcoin. Okay. So I believe Bitcoin will go on to another bull run and even a bigger bull run than it might have gone on before once we get rid of the crypto piece. Okay. People who are not in the know as Mark Moss usually throw Bitcoin under the crypto umbrella as if they are all the same. But of course, the revolution that Bitcoin represents is decentralization, and as Moss and other Bitcoin maximalists point out, Bitcoin, not crypto, meaning all other coins that came after Bitcoin, are just attempting to be the next Bitcoin. But why does Moss feel crypto will not see another bull run? The reason I would say crypto as a category had its last bull run is because of what's happened with FTX and the potential regulations that are coming in. Uh, so you first have to understand how crypto as a category works. And so Sam Bankman-Fried gave an interview earlier this year, I believe in May with uh, Joe Weisenthal and uh, 
I forget. And he, and he explained, he said, let's say that you create this box and then uh, this box is like this world changing protocol. And then you create this box token and then you trade this thinly traded box token to make it have a perceived value. And then you let other people start trading it. And so he kind of highlighted the way cryptocurrency works. And so the crypto market as a category blew up because venture capitalists love it because traditionally they would have to invest into a venture capital fund, wait 10 years for a liquidity event. But today, or in the last couple of years, they've been able to invest into these crypto assets where a creator would create this box token, as SBF called it. Um, and this venture capital would be able to come in and buy these box tokens for three cents and automatically turn and flip them for nine, 12 or 26 cents into the market. which Of course, they love. They've never seen that before, which, of course, started bringing more and more and more venture capital, hundreds of millions billions of dollars into the space. Then they started pushing all the media, the advertising, the Super Bowl ads. And so it created this massive buzz and everybody loved it. As SBF said in that interview, first they trade it with Alameda to give it perceived value. Then they advertise it. And then the market retail jumps in and think there's something there, even though there's not. Mm -hmm. And so the reason why I'd say as a category, we won't have another bull run is because I believe that now the SEC, the CFTC, Congress is going to be forced to act. Yeah. The, C the, S the SEC is there to protect consumers. They have obviously failed. Right? They've done a horrible job. They should probably just shut down and disband. Uh, but they're, they have egg on their face and they're going to be forced to act. We have, uh, you know, Elizabeth Warren and Maxine Waters are all calling for regulations. They're coming. And a lot of people push back on this and they didn't like when I said that because they say, Mark, you don't understand. Right. If the SEC regulates this, these tokens will just go offshore. They can't stop innovation. And I, and I agree, right? They can't stop innovation. But if these tokens go to these uh, offshore jurisdictions right. with, no, with no SEC oversight, the U.S. venture capital companies are not going with them. That money is not going. Uh, if it goes into a regulated space where these tokens have to go through regular um, securities, registrations, it just changes the landscape. So I'm not saying it goes away, but I think the days of 2017 and 2020, 2021, where the entire market cap went up and you could close your eyes and throw a dart I think those days are over. What about all the bling surrounding FTX? Like Kevin O'Leary's testimony in front of Congress saying that it was Binance that orchestrated the takedown of FTX, or the recent headlines about SBF having secretly funded The Block, a media company that covers crypto news. What's Mark's take on all of this? And who should investors trust when it comes to getting reliable information? Well, I would say that FTX orchestrated the, uh, the takedown of Terra Luna, which then took down Celsius, which then took down Three Arrows Capital, which then ultimately weakened sell, uh, FTX. Did Binance you know, potentially cause something because they said they wanted to sell their tokens? Maybe, maybe not. But I would say that, that was, uh, we, 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 we don't have any fact of that. But I would say that FTX started this problem, potentially, and they caused their own problem because of their sham of a, of a, of a balance sheet. And so if FTX said they want to sell the token and they had the money to back it up, it wouldn't have been a problem. I mean, and yes, to the, to the point that you're talking about with Block, um, it's very hard to um, know who to trust. And not just in the cryptocurrency space, but overall. And so that's a, that's a tough question, Danielle. I would say, you know, practice critical thinking, which is something that we've seemed to lose. Um, anytime I get a piece of information, if I get it from, let's say, RT, I know it's coming from Russia. So I understand who it's coming from and what slant it might have. And then I have to dissect the fact from opinion. And if I get it from Washington Post, it's a CIA mouthpiece. And so I look at it differently, right? And so I would say that we have to take each piece of information and look at it critically. Who's telling me? Uh, what what uh, interest do they have? What's the fact? What's the opinion? Uh, but in the crypto space and just the new space overall, yeah, it's it's a, it's a big problem. Uh, but back to Bitcoin. Uh, the whole point with Bitcoin is trust. Uh, don't trust. Verify. And because it's an open source network, nobody controls it. We don't have to worry about things like that. 2022 was definitely a painful year in many aspects and sectors. But Mark has some good advice to share when it comes to preparing for 2023 and what to expect in regards to Bitcoin's future. You know, one, one saying I love over and over uh, that I use all the time is uh, Charlie, uh, Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's partner. He said that the big money is not made in the buying and the selling. The big money is made in the waiting. And so what that means to me is two different things. Um, made in the waiting. So we want to wait until we have that fat pitch. We want to wait until we have that good opportunity to really strike hard and go hard. And we should be okay just to wait for that. The second part about that saying for me is that to make big money, you need to get into big trends early and then you have to wait 
a long time for them to develop. And so I think if you can look at some of these big trends, like I've already kind of spelled out, which I think are the energy and the commodity plays, Bitcoin plays, and even gold, and you are okay having like a five-year wait and hold outlook, I think you can make more money than people realize. How long do Bitcoin investors have to wait? Well, it depends on what you're waiting for, right? We know that Bitcoin is going to be lots of other things than we know today because it's just a revolution. But what we do know today is it's the best pristine collateral. It's the it's the best asset um, because of the fact, like I said, it solved the problem where I can, can own it. Nobody can manipulate it and nobody could seize it, steal it, et cetera. And so if we look at just uh, a, using Uber as an example, if I pitched you on Uber, I'd say, hey, it's, it's going to be worth 100 million sometime. And you'd be like, Mark, you're out of your mind. You're crazy. Like. Can't I just call a taxi company or a limo company? What do I need that for? And I'd say, well, if I could disrupt the taxi industry and take 5% of taxi and 5% of limos and 5% of vans, that's how I get this valuation. So if we take a look at store of value assets, store of value assets like gold, gold's whatever, 11, 12 trillion today. Okay. So we know that JP Morgan and Citibank both put out guidance that said they believe Bitcoin will overtake gold. And of course, we can have many conversations as to why I think that will happen. Uh, but if that were to be the case, that's a 20x from here. Uh, we know that it's also called a Swiss bank account. So it's a way I can hold money outside the banking system and nobody could seize it. There's $40 trillion parked in offshore banks. Uh, we know that uh, in fiat currencies, there's about $100 trillion. Then we have bonds. We have about $100 trillion in bonds. And again, people buy that to store their value. About $18 trillion is negative yielding. That's coming down, but that's a big problem. Equities, we were talking about stocks earlier. There's about $120 trillion sitting in equities. And then back to real estate. Of course, people live in their homes, but most people like to invest. You know, the rich like to invest into real estate. And there's about $326 trillion in real estate. So if we just add up those big categories, and we'll just stick there, we're at about $700 trillion of store of value assets. Store of value assets. So if Bitcoin could just capture 5% of that, which I think is totally reasonable, that's $35 trillion market cap divided by 21 million Bitcoin brings us to almost $2 million per Bitcoin. And I think we could be there by the end of the decade. And so just think about that as we go into the next year, um, you know, make some moves, pay attention, but be patient because I think we're probably going to have more pain going through most of next year. Probably by the end of next year, we'll be coming out of it, yep. um, but just be patient and wait. Moss predicts more pain for 2023, but with a price projection of $2 million per Bitcoin, I'd say it sure makes all the waiting worthwhile. What do you think of Mark's Bitcoin price prediction? Will we see crypto get hammered down by regulation this year? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give us a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. This is Let's Talk Crypto and we'll see you in the next video.